In 2000, ND Cube, a freshly founded small Nintendo second party developer, came about to put out a handful of GBA games. For those out of the loop, think of second party as in, I only make this one thing for one company exclusively. With time, they were able to build experience, both releasing games to mixed results and optimizing the capabilities of Nintendo consoles. While the games they made up till 2003 weren't particularly impressive, ND Cube has enough of a reputation that you might think, oh, Nintendo owns them? They must be kept looped in Nintendo's plans. Or, there must be something they particularly excel at since they're still around. While one of those assumptions is correct, prior to being pigeonholed into becoming the Mario Party dev, ND Cube got a bit of wiggle room to experiment with a great idea. What if we took a swing at F-Zero? No, not another GBA game, like a real F-Zero game. Hey gang, y'all remember the nerf video, right? That was mainly a joke full of shit posts, <laughs> and it, like most of my better ideas, was born out of an inside joke from friends and I talking shit. Well, this one is a cry for help, cause I'm begging you to play this game. If you enjoy any fast-paced sci-fi racing game, like F-Zero, you should try Tube Slider. In fact, ND Cube's thought process came from already working on F-Zero Maximum Velocity. A Game Boy Advance game I've already alluded to twice in less than a minute, so I should probably spend one on it. Great. Just freaking great. It's the first game ND Cube put out, the first handheld F-Zero game. It's a launch game for the GBA that supported single pack multiplayer, which I find absolutely endearing. And it's pretty good. I love that game, boy. I mean, you're still playing a racing game on the fucking GBA with no backlight and the worst sound chip ever, but hey, I still had fun. And the critics tend to agree. From there they released four more games, three on the GBA and one on the GameCube called Pool Edge, which is so goddamn textbook for weird Japanese video game, I think that... Right, sorry, I should probably talk about the game this video is titled after. Looking through the Moby Games' credit has me believe that this was more of a fun project for the team than the championship of future formula racing games on the GameCube. All of the directors listed have this as their first and in many cases last time directing a game. Some even have this as their only game. There's also credits to Studio 4C, uh, the studio behind Akira, for being tapped on all of the ship designs, but I'm getting ahead myself. The damning line that made this video's title is a citation that Tube Slider was originally pitched as an F-Zero game. Unlike other YouTubers though, I'm gonna call out that this came primarily from a Eurogamer article with nothing else to back it up. I haven't been able to find anything specific like a direct interview but it makes sense that since it's so widespread as fact, we could just go with it. Just about your most entry-level F-Zero fan will tell you that Sega and Amusement Vision, uh, the Monkey Ball guys, were actually contacted by Nintendo to work on F-Zero, which I'm assuming was pretty late in the deal by the time ND Cube decided they wanted their work on the fridge too. Strangely enough, this game only got a US release, and it was gonna come out on PS2, Xbox, Game Boy Advance, the whole shebang. Apparently no one knows the real reason why the other versions were canceled. NEC did publish other stuff, though, uh, let's see. Oh, there's me! 
And there's everyone else. If you like Clonod and current year, you're on a list, by the way. They missed out because the game's planner, Kazushi Maita, called out the uniqueness of the track's design and game's namesake. If you've ever looked at older F-Zero games, you'll notice that the 2D ones have tracks reminiscent of your typical Mario Kart, while the 3D games, particularly GX, focus on a mix. It led to a lot of tension, as you weren't just focused on winning the race, but not fucking dying. It added an extra layer of skill, since you were balancing racing with your own ship's health, boosting, potentially killing other racers, etc. Tube Slider's course design focuses a lot more on the novelty of being inside the track and adding an even higher skill ceiling on being a good racer. Maita's quoted as saying he wanted to capture the experience of racing down a bobsled or luge track, and the game delivers. Like, this game gives me hard tunnel vision. Due to the enclosed track and focus on these being more racing vehicles than the F-Zero style of this is also a starship, the game's physics makes the weight of each car more varied and actually matter. Think of this more as a futuristic Gran Turismo to F-Zero's Cruising USA. I guess since we were already talking about the anti-grab vehicles, we might as well jump to... God damn! Mitsuteru Furukawa led the music on this game. In a break of one of my editing signatures, I'm only using music from the OST instead of my own. Although that will be broken if I get a claim on this, please be cool Nintendo, I claim no ownership. Furukawa has been working on tons of classics from Loco Roco to, oh shit, Gran Turismo. So they know what they were doing. The music pairs well with the presentation I'm a simp for. This mix of Ghost in the Shell crossed with Blade Runner that makes me think of the phrase Power drives the future. That one's for free if anyone wants to use that. A thank you would be appreciated though. All of the visuals lean heavy on this industrial strength and complexity. Sort of like a prototype or proof of concept. It plays well into the championship of future formula as the game's unofficial moniker, along with the designs of each vehicle and their strengths and implied weaknesses. Some are well balanced, like my favorite, the octopus. Some are for the sweaties and have min max stats. And some are. Helps me forget about my cancer. The game lets you hop straight into a simple Grand Prix. Three races, everything's pretty chill, nothing too hard. Except for Big Tree. This track is easily my least favorite of the starting pool, but it's your warning sign. You see, I haven't been completely upfront about this game. You know when I said, hop straight into a simple Grand Prix four sentences ago? Well, this game is gonna treat you like an adult. That handle on the GameCube wasn't for babies, it was to fuck you up if you skipped the training mode. If you were like me, most kids, or goofy ass reviewers of the time, you were in to get reamed like paper right up the middle. Sure, the first Grand Prix is easy, a tiny spike on Big Tree, but manageable. Uh, not after that. Every race after that will be kicking your teeth in and there is no real rubber banding. If you are good, you can flex. If you are trash, the AI can finish minutes ahead of you. Like in F-Zero, you may literally die, but Tube Slider just leaves you feeling like you wish you were dead. So, just like me, you say, well, shit, I guess it's time to go to the lab. Except I didn't say that as a kid. Instead, just leaving it in the box for years, only to play the first Grand Prix once in a while. But now, I have the capacity, and more importantly, patience, to learn. So, let's cook! Alright, bullet point time. Tutorial mode is just a video. Letting go of the gas breaks. Side boosters are an L and R. This is super useful for adjusting position without losing speed. Subvernier, uh, aka the boost in this game, comes in two flavors. Building a charge, aka a booster, or building a meter, turbo. Each one has its advantages depending on your weight and boost capacity. Turbo usually plays out for better acceleration. Booster plays out better for if you have a higher top speed. Slide turns are very important in later tracks. Depending on which booster you activate at each time, you could either keep yourself straight and angled, or drift turning is also extremely important on some of the harder tracks. They're different and will kick your back out so that you can, you know, drift. Drafting is essentially boost stealing. This is the biggest reason you need to pass.
pack race in this game. Don't bump or you're gonna lose the boost. You can also fucking counter the boost steal. I remember this pissing me off when I streamed it before and not realizing this. Like, you can stop people boost stealing. Keeping towards the bottom of the track does matter. Even though you're flying around in a tube, there is still gravity. So knowing which way you are, will actually help you keep a higher top speed. Think like uh, track lines in more modern racing games. Jesus, the course practice in this is a godsend. The orbs are placed in the optimal place so you know just where to be on the track if you want to keep top speed. The only downside is Sunset Highway and Factory Plate are the only options. Seeing as they're the two more reused tracks, it only makes sense. Either way, it's time to lab this out, so let's get to it. Anytime you see me and my son down there dancing, uh, know it's my footage. So the first Grand Prix, Sunset Highway and Factory Plate go down smooth. Uh, I did get a chance to practice the courses, so it only makes sense. Big tree, big fucking tree. My apologies of this footage, but Big Tree will make you dizzy trying to watch me play it. I cannot for the life of me keep my sense of which way is down or stay on one side of the track. It's really fun, don't get me wrong, but the sharp kinks and bends would have any BDSM gymnast crying for a break. That joke wasn't funny at all. Either way, we close out our first cup. I don't know if you noticed, but there's no difficulty select, by the way. The three cups available are the difficulty. The first one here, I can sleep through. The next one, eh. Factory Plate is an actual brawl this time. Sunset Highway, I'm almost robbed in fucking broad daylight. Imitation Jungle is a really cool track that I fucking fumble at the finish line, god damn it. I'm still getting robbed in Big Tree, and Ancient Canyon is cool. So that was the Medium Cup. How do you feel? Yeah, I said Medium Cup, you still have the Hard Cup. Robbed at Big Tree for the third fucking time. Imitation Jungle, Factory Plate, and the new track, Suspension Bridge, go just fine. Sunset Highway is starting to wear on me, though. I fucking screamed while recording this. Ancient Canyon had this purple whore decide to fuck me. And the new track, Rainbow Ocean, was pretty cool. And with that, we beat the Normal Cup series. I have to call out, this is my first time ever doing this, so I'm kind of proud of myself. Uh, what do you get? Nothing. Wait, did you expect something nice? No, this was the equivalent of getting your GED. You proved you could learn the controls and learn tracks. Now it's time for the Maximum Cup series. The Maximum series has way higher top speeds. Tracks that used to take three minutes now take a minimum of a minute off. And the spread on times, everyone is on top of each other. I didn't take much footage of this because it was so goddamn difficult that I couldn't be bothered to build gigs upon gigs of footage that was just losses with no progress. So I looked for cheats. There are no cheats. Instead, every page looks like this. So I checked for a save. Luckily, game facts, game FAQs, whatever, they got the hookup. I get to see all the alternate vehicles. Even though they all say they have the same stats, they feel different to handle. Also, can't confirm, but the boost gauge feels like it fills faster. This also gave me access to the final boss in his track, Billboard Town. Billboard Town is just that Blade Runner Ghost in the Shell reference I made earlier. Really cool track with long strikes for dumping boost on. The final boss requires that after all. Meet Spider. He's a fuck ass. The largest vehicle in the game that looks like current day Tetsuya Nomura drew it. He has max stats in every area and only exists on this track the one track he is made to bend you over, again and again. Both with the octopus and the newer variation, the Kraken, I cannot for the life of me be any closer than three seconds behind this fuck. Three full seconds. The track isn't long to begin with, but this fat fuck picks up two power-ups due to his girth and is so naturally fast you will struggle to keep up with him, unless you study the track like he has. Even then, you need to be constantly draining him. Since his base stats are so overpowered, it's like a child versus Goliath. He is ridiculous. I spent hours trying to beat this race, and I can't fucking do it. To think that beating this fuck is the requirement to get your alt version of any car you race him with completely justify why I know many people haven't beaten this. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good game to play, not one to, like, 
completely finish. You could tell nobody finished this game back in the day, especially not reviewers. Most reviews talk about F-Zero, which is wild since this did beat GX to the cube. I totally get why, since this was back in the forgotten days where people had X on the N64 and GX was at least in talks. You can't convince me that someone genuinely played this game and then called the music trash though. Tube Slider unfortunately gets left out of a lot of conversation. While I admit it's not F-Zero under another name like some might have you think, I do think it deserves a seat on your shelf. The game has four players at 60 FPS on the GameCube, has an amazing soundtrack, cool track designs, and playstyle that I think you'd be hard to find elsewhere. Fuck X-Play though, fucking two out of five, you piece of shit.